All right, so Mobley gets hurt in the third quarter. There's two aspects of the Mobley injury. One is the injury and what that means. I don't think we've gotten any updates yet today. Uh, he left the arena in a boot last yeah, night. Yeah, right. Uh, Hayden Grove had a better look than I did. He said it looked like his ankle was a golf ball, yeah. very swollen. Typically, a sp- I'm assuming it's a sprained ankle. Yeah. We'll find out more from JB today. Yeah. There's uh, different levels to sprained yeah, ankles, but I, it, was, it looked like he sprained it from right. so three he plays. Right, so certainly not playing any time soon. I'm guessing think. a week to no. two weeks, if not more. Yeah, right, right. So that that's one part of this is the injury itself. The other part is the fact that it seems like it, it maybe wasn't coincidental. Not necessarily that it was Mobley, but just that they played their best basketball with four shooters, with four shooters and one big guy. Let's let's start with that aspect of it, guys. The fact that you know, coincidence or something to it. Oh, there's definitely something to it. Yeah. And I have been pretty stronghold on the stance that in some capacity the Cavs' best lineup included Mobley and Allen. And I'm officially, ha! I'm officially He's oh. changing. There I'm he goes. On the, on the win now. And it's partly because I had hoped and I had held steady in the stance that Mobley could develop into a three-point shooter. But if you go back and you, and you watch the end of the Knicks game, and I'll get to what we saw last night, there were multiple possessions mm-hmm. late in the Knicks game, and we showed it on the show yesterday, where Evan Mobley's wide-ass open in the corner and Darius Garland doesn't even look his way. Yeah. Meaning if Darius doesn't trust Evan to make that shot, he ain't shooting it, and in the playoffs, the pressure only ramps up. Right. And the spacing is so congested. You, you can make space with two bigs, and there's certainly ways to do it. But when the defense locks in, especially late in the game, I don't feel confident that the Cavaliers' best offensive option is with four feet, essentially, two for Allen, two for Mobley, two players, however you want to call it, yeah. around the paint. I want it as spaced out as possible. I want Donovan to have as much ability to drive without it being congested. I want the same for Darius. And I want two guys in the corner where their defenders can't help off for them to be able to kick out to in case they don't have a straight line drive. And at the point, yeah. at the point in time we are right now, Mobley doesn't make shots consistently enough. And hell, on Sunday, Dean Wade and Niang were unplayable because they didn't make shots. Last night they were phenomenal. There's a happy medium between the two. If Dean Wade and Niang are going to make seven threes in the fourth quarter, they have to play, obviously. If they're 0 for 6 like they were against New York, well, you got a little different preposition at hand. But I am, I am starting to teeter towards the their best crunch time lineup includes one big and four shooters, and right. that's not how I felt leading up to... Uh, Are you going to be on the bad stuff. list of uh, the Cavs uh, No, I think that's totally mafia? fair. No, okay. I, think, I think that's totally fair. All right, G. Hey, listen, you know... Uh, and, we, well, can I say more things? Sorry, sorry. Yeah. It doesn't mean Mobley can't play. Mobley is a crucial, invaluable role on this team. I just don't know if, if you need a bucket, he's in the lineup you have on the court to get a bucket. See, it's going to take some heart, and it's going to take some foresight by JB. I don't know uh, if, he, if he has the heart to do it. One of them got to come off the bench. See, I disagree with that part of it. I, 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 well, you just said you want to play one. You're saying at the end of the at game. At the end of the game. What does it start, matter, though? The, like, st- the starters... Yeah, it's, it's all about who ends the game. The uh, well, here, here's the thing. I don't think they could both be on the floor at, for major minutes at a time, right? Because when you look at it, this just, just so happens that you have a, a complete sample size. You watched in the beginning of that game. I don't even know who this guy was. I thought it was Tyler Zeller or something. Luke Cornett. But he was, yeah. he, he shred- played great last night. Oh, my gosh. He was looking like one of Shredder's foot soldiers. I'm like, where this foot soldier coming from? <laughs> he blocked everything moving. Darius Garland, get that out of here. Evan Mobley, he was blocking shots back to back to back. And I noticed, I'm like, how was he getting to all these? He was like, well, well, Evan Mobley and Jared Allen are four feet away from each other. And neither one of them is comfortable shooting a 15 to 17 foot jumper consistently. And that's a bad shot now. Mm -hmm. They're letting them have it. And when Evan Mobley would get the ball around the arc, he's not even comfortable putting the ball on the ground that many dribbles, right? It's just, he does to me, and and I just, I've come to it. I don't know why we were fooled. Maybe we, you don't just get presence and awareness and, and, and awareness in space. He does, to me, does not have the athleticism to play those positions. When you look at Wimby, when he does his Euro step, when he's crossing over, when he spins through, when he comes off the pick, he's comfortable with it. Whenever Mobley's got the ball in his hands, he's thinking, all right, well, where do I get this ball to? He doesn't have the, 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 the skill set to take the ball 
from the three point line, pump fake, and take seven dribbles. Two, three dribbles. He just don't have to he just don't have it. So you have to ask yourself, what's the best way to incorporate him? Well, obviously for me, it's splitting the two apart. Now, if you want Evan Mobley to be the unicorn, you go to Jared Allen and say, Jared Allen, you come off the bench, right? You, you're older. Listen, you shouldn't have – Jared Allen had, shouldn't have that much of an ego. He doesn't. He literally has no ego. He so he has no – he, he do it coming off the bench. You split them up. Now, look, I still think you still have to split Garland, and you still got to split uh, uh, Donovan Mitchell. Now, you can have them start the game and have them finish the game. I'll agree with Mike. I'll take Darius Garland in, at the end. If he can knock down some jumpers and because you, you're going to go one, one, one in, four out. But for me, I think that this is going to show you in this next stretch for the two weeks, two, three weeks, Evan Mobley is out before the playoffs. Yeah. You're going to see the Cavs get back yeah. to what the Cavs were doing before, and they'll yeah. look a lot better. You know, Jason, uh, over the last couple of years, not as much this year, but, but especially the last two years, or last year, I should say, often brought up the fact that you know, Mobley hasn't necessarily had the chance to develop because the, when the Cavs made the trade for Donovan Mitchell, the focus of the team was different. Timeline accelerated. Right. You're trying to win. Okay? The Cavs are a half game behind Milwaukee for the two seed. They just beat the best team in basketball shorthanded. I understand they hadn't played well the last two weeks. But overall, since whatever that – their hot streak started in November. The All-Star break. Dece- no, 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 no. When their hot streak started. Oh, December. Six, December? December 16th. Okay. Overall, for the last almost three months, two and a half months, outside of two weeks before yesterday, they played great basketball. Yes. Now, sometimes you get focused in on, oh, for seven games they played poorly. And they did. Mm-hmm. Even the best teams are going to be – Milwaukee looked like crap for a while. Now they're back to playing but great. But big picture. Big picture, they've been mostly an excellent team yeah. for two and a half months. And they've mostly done it at their best, one in, four out. We can't worry about Mobley's development. When, when Mobley first came back from injury a month ago, whatever it was, I, we all were like, let him shoot, let him shoot, let him shoot. Well, now that's over. Yeah. Because now done. Done. the playoffs are six weeks away and he's hurt. So that's done. You got to know what he can and can't do. There's no more expectation. Right. At, yeah. at this point, that's maybe a next year thing. Yep. We'll see. But I think you. I'm with you. Um the Cavs are going to be a better team, and their best chance to win in the playoffs is with Mobley and Allen playing, not playing together. And that doesn't mean they can't play any minutes together, but for the most part, not playing together, and certainly not playing together at the end of games. Yeah. I think that means no Mobley at the end of games. I agree. Especially because the injury. We don't even know when he's going to be back. Yeah. If this is like a, a serious sprained ankle, he could miss the rest of the regular season. Well, can, I, can I give you a little spin zone? Yeah. Now. You never want to see guys get hurt. No. And the, the timing of this injury is particularly frustrating because the next 20 games, we were hoping to get some sort of clarity or answers from JB on how he was going to utilize the two bigs, yeah. what their best lineups were. And now, depending on when Mobley's return is, we won't be able to find that out until there's five, six games left. And at that point, you better have your rotation figured out or else yeah. we got bigger issues. On the flip side, if you look at the Eastern Conference standings today, Cavs are the three seed. Do you know who's the four seed today? Orlando. Orlando. Do you know who's the five seed today? The Knicks. And do you know who's the six seed? Miami. Philadelphia. Oh, Phil- you sure? Mm, as of this morning, yeah. Okay. But I- either yeah, way, yeah. My, my, my point is right. there's so much shuffling of the deck in the yes. Eastern Conference, and even two to seven, it's not that big of a gap. We all agree. During that 18 and two stretch, no Mobley, no Garland for part of it. They were playing four, in, uh, four out, one in. That was their best brand of prolonged basketball we had seen, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now with Mobley out, assuming Donovan can come back in the next couple games, and we got an update. I, well, I'm not from, rushing him back. We got an update from JB yesterday. He's, yeah. he's going to miss the next two, then they're going to reevaluate. When he was asked in the press conference directly yesterday, how long do you expect Mitchell to be out? He said, I hope not a month, which isn't the greatest thing you want to hear no, from the coach. No, but there, there's, certainly you don't want to yeah. rush him back. But I, I, you I, want I, him back no, no. before the end of the regular season. I'm just season, saying there's yeah. no guarantee he's yeah. back in, in a week now. Right. It could be something longer. With Mobley on the sideline, if you're all under the agreement or the impression that their best lineup includes one big, they're going to have to win a bunch of these games against tougher teams in the regular season to stay afloat in the 2-3 spot as right. opposed to falling into the 4-5 or right. now even, four, even, God forbid, the 6. I six. believe they're 4 or 4.5 four up on Orlando and the Knicks. Yeah, but, but I'm just saying it's – But it could it go is, away in a hurry when so, you're playing good so teams. So the fact that 
if, if you do think they're best suited playing four and one out, yeah. JB has no choice anymore. This is what right. we're going to see and in, in, the, in the big picture of competing for home, field, home court advantage with hopefully the two seed, the three seed to avoid a potential uh, matchup with Boston in the second round. So you got to hold on to one of those two. Going four out, one in, yeah. because you're forced to right now. It's a slight spin zone if you think that's their best chance to win. I, I think their game. best. So their be, let's think about this, guys. Let's speculate ahead. Mm-hmm. Right now, their best lineup for closing games. If everyone's healthy. If everyone's healthy. In my opinion, it's Garland, Mitchell, Allen, uh, Okoro. And then I'm not sure who who's the fifth guy. And do you agree with those <clears> four? <throat> well, I think no. I think the tricky no, okay. part. I think the tricky part for JB is going to be. I believe that every single night, he's going to have to figure out who's his best lineup to finish the game. Okay, so not I, necessarily. Which, which is well, difficult. Well, Coro. If you're winning, maybe because it's a Coro. It's, if you're losing, it's somebody else. It's Garland, Mitchell, Allen, and, and then, then two, it's and then it's matchup right. dependent. If they have a guy that you need Isaac's defense on the right, perimeter for, if they have size. You can't go like Struess and Akuro could be those next two guys if right. you need size. Maybe it's Wade or Niang, but it's those three. Yeah. And then it's matchup dependent. Who is the hot hand? But we all agree Mobley should not be on the court at the end of the games. As Unless, of today, as of yeah. today, today yes. yes, I do. And, and, and here's because I don't know many teams that have this. The Cavs have shown that they got three or four dudes that can hit ten threes. Struess is is hit seven eight threes. Dean Wade has hit seven threes. You look at uh, uh, not only him. Merrill. Merrill can hit ten threes. Uh, uh, George Niang has gotten hot and had 30 uh, in, in, in playing and, and doing it. And then Karis LeVert is a guy who's got 50 in this league. A and multiple times. And <clears throat> so you got a lot of shooters, a lot yeah. of guys that can come off the bench. And you saw Karis LeVert, uh, you know, being a distributor. He's the last, yeah, I'd say, six, seven games, he's been really distributing the ball and playback and creating and all those things. I actually like it. Uh, I would yeah. give Der- I would give a Donovan Mitchell mad games off. I don't care yeah. if he comes back in 15 games, whatever. And then still, yeah. now we could get Darius Garland. Let's see if we can get him to move the basketball. 